Hey, hey, you're listening to the Journey with Janice podcast. Join me on the journey of pursuing Jesus, building our lives on the word, and seeing this world impacted with the love of God. The Journey with Janice podcast is part of the NRT Podcast Network. You can find my podcast and other great podcasts in the network at newreleasetoday.com. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at The Journey with Janice and check out my website, journeywithjanice.com. Hey, hey, besties. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Journey with Janice podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. It has been a minute because, you know, I've been over here getting married and things. And so, The Lord has just had me in a new season, like He has so many other people. I'm seeing so many people step into the fulfillment of God's promises over their life, whatever that looks like. Just It's a season of breakthrough. It's a season of promises fulfilled, of longings fulfilled. And so that's been the season of life I've been in as a newlywed. And so I have kind of taken a little bit of a pause from the podcast, but today I just had a word stirring in my spirit and I'm like, okay, it's go time. We're going to record a new podcast. So this is the the first podcast I have officially recorded as Mrs. Enriquez. For those of you who are like, how in the world do we say your new last name? It's Enriquez. H is silent. And so it's been fun hearing how everyone is pronouncing my new last name. It's been fun um, just being Danny's wife. Today is actually our one month anniversary. And so shout out to Danny. Happy anniversary, my love. And I am just sitting here with a French vanilla caramel coffee that I made out of this really bougie Keurig that someone got us from our re- wedding registry. It was actually the It Is Well women's group, so shout out to them. I love that group of fiery, passion-filled women who are my sisters in Christ up in the Kezu area. And this Keurig is, it's like incredible. It's got like Bluetooth capabilities. The problem is like I can lay in bed and like tell it to make me coffee, but then there's there's no like robot to bring us the coffee, so we still have to get up. But anyway, it's got that. It's got this fancy frother, which is just, it's just super fun. And so I have myself a, a fancy little coffee sitting here, cooling down a little bit in my I Love New York mug from my friend Vanessa. I love gifts. Listen, if y'all are like, how do I express love to Janice? What are her love languages? Uh, honestly, I think I'm like multilingual because all the love languages, I love all of them. And so gifts I love. And this is from uh, my friend Vanessa from Peru. Her and I did some ministry things together in New York City uh, for a ministry that I was part of a few years ago, which I was so blessed to be connected to called Metro World Child. And so she was a missionary on site there. And then I did some stuff in the field as far as just like going to churches and sharing about the heart and vision of the ministry. And so anyway, she got me this mug and I love it. And every time I use it, I think of her in that season of my life. And I love being able to look back at the seasons of life that God has brought me through and just see his hand of faithfulness through all of it. And I'm very much a proponent of looking forward you know, the, the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. Paul says, forget the things that are behind, press on toward the mark of our high calling. We know that we get a warning in the word of God. Remember Lot's wife, she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. And so there is a danger in staying stuck in past seasons. And I, like I said, I want to look back and see the hand of God and see his faithfulness and remember his goodness in those seasons, but I don't want to stay stuck in the past seasons of my life. I've said this so many times, but I love hearing testimonies from seasoned Christians, people who have been in the faith for a long time. I love hearing about what God did in ages past, you know, in years past ages makes it sound like incredibly long time. But, you know, I hear a lot of testimonies from 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago, but sometimes I'm like, what is God doing in your life now? What is he doing in your life now? What have you been reading in the word that he's revealing to your heart? What has he been speaking to you? What has he been showing you? What healings and miracles have you seen in your life in this season? And I think again, that that is such a danger as Christians for us to live kind of on this high of past seasons and not fully step in and engage in the new season that God has for us. And so, like I said, I look back, I see this mug and I'm like, oh, I love that season of my life. I loved slaying singlehood and and doing the single thing and being in the season that God had me in, but that's not where I'm at anymore. And so I'm thankful for it. I have so many lessons that I've learned from it. So many things that God revealed to me, so much of God's character that I just learned more about in those seasons of my life. 
but I want to be present in the season God has me in now and where he has me now and where he's taking me and preparing now for the things he's prepared for me in the future. And so that was all just an appetizer. Honestly, that wasn't even anything of what I was going to share, what really was stirring in my heart in the moment. But every time I start the podcast, I say, Holy Spirit, say what you want through me. I'm your vessel. I'm your mouthpiece. And so use me as you will. So I'm believing someone needed to hear that word of encouragement. I have my Bible open right now to Psalm 147. I love the word of God. I love his word. It's living and it's active. The Bible says, there's a scripture that says that his word is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the worker of God would be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Every single one of us is called to good works. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's masterpiece, that we're his handiwork created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared long ago. He prepared in advance for us. So every single one of us has a call, has a purpose, has a destiny, a unique thing that God's created us for. And I pray more than anything that you find that. Well, I pray more than anything that you encounter him and that you fall in love with his word. But I pray today that you figure out what that is in your own life, what God has called you to, and that you step into that with confidence, with the boldness that he's given you. And so I love that. His word helps sharpen us so that we can be equipped for those good works that he's called us to. And so I love the word of God. I have it open here in front of me, my big pink study Bible, because hello, who doesn't love a pink study Bible? And so I have it open to Psalm 147 here, and I'm like, Lord, this is so good, and just felt like I'm supposed to share this with you. And so I love this, starting in verse 3. It says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of stars. He calls them by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. And before I hopped on here tonight, I just felt like there was such a word of encouragement that needed to be released over you that God sees you where you're at. The very God who breathed stars into existence, who knows every one of them by name, that is beyond our comprehension. If you go out on a clear night and look up at the sky and see the amount of stars that are just in our galaxy, let alone all the other galaxies, like it's mind blowing that a God that has that capability knows us by name, that he is intimately acquainted with all of our ways, that he knows every hair on our head. He knows every thought before we even think it. We can't grasp that because our minds are finite, but he is an infinite God. And I love that it says his understanding is infinite. And so many times we go through seasons of life where we feel like we're alone. We feel like we're misunderstood. We have those questions. Does anybody see me? Am I alone? Does anybody care? Does anyone understand what I'm going through? And I love that the New Testament says that we don't have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with us. Jesus has gone through everything in the human experience that we will ever go through. And so he understands, he gets it. So when you go to him, Know that he cares. He cares for you. The Bible says he cares for you. He calls you his beloved. He wants to know what's on your heart. He wants to spend time with you. He wants that intimate relationship with you. He's not a God who's distant. He's not a God who's far off and just kind of up there in the sky somewhere, unable to relate to us. No, he is an intimate God. We hear this word a lot at Christmas time. It's the word Emmanuel. It's a name of God that means God with us. He's a God who came down into humanity. Jesus became fully man so that he could understand and he could sympathize with everything we go through in this human experience. The only difference is that he did everything that he did without sin. He faced every temptation without sin. He endured everything that we could ever go through, but without sin. We don't have that capability to live a sinless life. That's why we need him as our savior. But we do have a God, I want to circle back to that, that we have a God who understands. We have a God who sees us. We have a God who knows us, who loves us, who isn't changing his mind about us. I'm going to say that again because I think somebody needs to hear that God is not changing his mind about you. Sometimes we get so programmed with this idea in culture and in just church culture that we have to be this certain way. We have to reach this certain level of perfection, whatever. Can I tell your heart the truth that you're never going to be perfect? It's a beautiful thing, though, because the Bible says that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We can be in right standing with God. We can stand before him spotless and blameless and pure and holy 
But it's only by the blood of Jesus. It's only by accepting him as our savior. Nothing we do in and of ourselves it can, can accomplish that. It's only what Jesus accomplished at the cross. And that seems to be like the theme of my heart in this season is just telling people like, you don't have to figure it all out. You don't have to, to understand everything. The Bible says not to lean on our own understanding, to acknowledge him in all of our ways and that he'll direct our path. And so many times, especially if you're a type A, like myself at times, like we want to figure it all out. Like, God, I want to know what's next before I take that next step. And it's hard sometimes to step out in faith when we don't know what's going to happen. And look at Peter stepping out of the boat. Like Jesus called him out into the waters, but he didn't know what that was going to look like probably until he started stepping and he saw like, oh my gosh, I'm walking on the water. Like what in the world? And so many times we miss out on the supernatural experiences that God wants to walk us through because we're staying comfortable inside of our proverbial boats. And that's going to look different for all of us. For some of us, it's not being willing to step out and give that word of encouragement or not being willing to step out and pray with that person. How many times do we tell someone, I'll pray for you, and sometimes we don't even end up doing that. Other times we do, but we're not bold enough to pray with them right there on the spot. For some of you, that's like, oh my gosh, that makes me so uncomfortable to think about praying for someone. Start with your friends. Just be like, hey, I want to start practicing praying for people. Let me pray for you. Like we as Christians, the Bible says that we're as bold as a lion. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And so you have a a lion inside of you that's ready to roar. And there's a song out right now by Brandon Lake called Gratitude. And in the bridge of that song, he says that like, let that lion roar, that there's a lion inside of you because we're not created with the spirit of fear God's given us power, love, and a sound mind. He hasn't given us a spirit of timidity. So we can be bold in him, and it's only through him that we can have that that boldness to step out. For some of you, it might be reaching out and reconciling with someone that you need to make amends with. Whatever that looks like, whatever you are choosing to stay in the boat and stay captive to instead of stepping out, I just pray a release over you today that you would be completely set free to do what God has called you to. And not just in these instances that might be popping up in your heart right now, but always. The Bible says in Galatians 5.1 that it's for freedom that Christ set us free. And then it says, therefore, do not go back again to the yoke of bondage. And a lot of times our bondage is fear of man. A lot of times bondage is fear of failure, fear of whatever. There's so many forms of fear that fear has a lot of faces, but God is setting us free and we need to stay free, not just get free, but stay free because we have those moments where we experience breakthrough and we see the hand of God and we know that we're, we're just having this breakthrough in our lives. And then our natural propensity, if we stay in the flesh or if we revert back to the flesh, is to go back to those places of bondage. But God wants you to get free and he wants you to stay free. And I'm going to let you sit on that thought for a second while I take a little sip of my coffee. Get free and stay free. How do we stay free? Because I know some of you, as I'm, I'm sharing this, you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I can look back at my life and I can see these times when I've had breakthrough, what I, where I've experienced these moments or these seasons with the Spirit of God. We know the Bible says where His Spirit is, there is freedom. And we have those moments where we encounter His presence and we know that those chains have been broken, those bondages have been loosed from us. And then over time, we find ourselves back in that same pit that God pulled us out of. And it's like, okay, God, what does it take for us to get free and stay free? And I believe one of the greatest tools God has given us is his written word. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, which is bondage, which is shame, which is addiction. But then it says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to remember to renew our minds constantly. For some of us, you need to be reminded to take captive every thought. I'm preaching to myself here too. To take captive every thought. If you're like me, like my mind is most of the time going 100 miles an hour. I'm dreaming, I'm imagining, I'm thinking of like just different things and whatever. And it's so easy to let the train track of our mind go on the wrong trail. Like to get on the wrong train and start thinking about things that have nothing to do with anything that matters or nothing to do with being rooted in the word of God, nothing to do with truth. We know Philippians tells us to meditate, so to think on whatever is true, noble, just, pure, lovely, excellent, praiseworthy of good report. 
think I'm these things. And so many times, and I'm guilty of it too, and I'm confessing it to the world, that my mind gets on things that have nothing to do with what God wants me to be thinking about. And I'll start thinking about things that don't matter, that maybe have no eternal significance. Colossians 3 tells us, set your mind on things above. But how often are our thoughts fixed on things of this world? How often are we consumed with things that really have no eternal significance, that really don't matter? And that's been a gauge for myself that I've found myself asking myself at times when I get frustrated or I'm angry or I'm upset about something or something's bothering me. It's like, does this really matter eternally? Is this worth my thoughts right now? Because the enemy wants nothing more than for us to live defeated and distracted lives to get our mind on things that don't matter that don't matter. And so taking those thoughts captive, like the Bible says, we take every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. And so when you find yourself thinking about things that you're like, no, this is not in alignment with what God has spoken over me, with what the word of God says, with what I believe to be true, what his promises are for me, that are yes and amen. Maybe for some of you, you're single and you're like, I'm never going to find a husband. But you know, God has told you that he has a kingdom spouse for you. So when those thoughts come in, when the enemy is attacking your mind, you hold up that shield of faith that the Bible says extinguishes every fiery dart of the enemy and you speak faith over that thought. You take that thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. That means that you submit that thought and you override it with the truth. And so when that thought comes at you, and this is just a random scenario here right now, like I'm never going to meet someone who meets the qualifications that I desire, who is a godly man walking in integrity, all these things, you stop and you arrest that thought and you say, no, God, I thank you that you're preparing a husband for me, that you're preparing me for him, that we will be a kingdom couple, that we will walk in the fullness of what you have for us, that we will be destructive to darkness, that we will advance your kingdom, that we will bring your glory here through our lives together, through our union. God, I thank you for my husband. And then start interceding for him. Start praying for him. And you'll watch those thoughts of just doubt flee in Jesus' name because that's what happens. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Not he might flee. Not if you try hard enough, he'll flee. No, it says submit to God. So the first thing is, okay, I'm submitting God to what you've said, to what you've spoken, to your truth. I'm resisting what the enemy is coming at me with. And then I'm going to watch him flee because he has to. That's kingdom. That's principle. That's scripture. And we can stand on God's word. It is a firm foundation. It is a firm foundation and it never changes. I love, I just like glanced down at my Bible here in Col- and not in Colossians, I'm in Psalms still. 146, 5, it says, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Where is your hope? Where is your confidence? Where is your expectation? My prayer is that your confidence, your hope, your expectation is in God. And that you keep your heart open to him to say, God, if I have any desires in me that are not in alignment with you, If I am focusing on anything that I would even call kingdom, but it's really even not what you called me to, it just kind of looks good and it looks like God, but it's really not sent from you, God, change my desires. Sync the rhythm of my heart, God, with yours because I want to desire what you want. And I'm praying this over myself even right now. I want to desire what he wants me to desire. I want to desire the things that he desires because ultimately at the end of the day, I want to look more like him. The Bible says that we're continually conformed to the pattern of His image. I want to look more like Jesus today than I did last week, than I did last month, than I did last year. And all that takes is being in His Word and being in His presence. And I've said this so many times to so many people, like, we can know a lot of things, but at the end of the day, if we find ourselves as lovers of His Word and of His presence— That changes everything. When you just sit with him, and even earlier where we read, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Some of you know my testimony. For those that don't, I went through a divorce a little over eight years ago. And the Lord just told me to sit with him and let him love me back to life. Let him heal me. I wasn't doing anything other than just being with him in the very presence of God. Healed my heart in a way that nothing else can nothing else can. It was a supernatural healing and mending of my heart. And I love that it says he binds up their wounds. And if you dig into that scripture and really dig into the original meanings and whatever, the definitions of those words, that phrase that he binds up their wounds doesn't mean that you just, you know, you look at the heart, just imagine what the heart looks like, broken, shattered, 
beaten, bruised up. He's not coming along and just putting a Band-Aid on it and, and mending those broken pieces with some sort of spiritual spackling. Like, no, he literally takes that broken heart and replaces it with a brand new heart. He does such a healing that you could look at the two hearts and not even believe that they are the same thing. And that was a cry of my heart when I walked through the season of healing and my journey of healing with him is like, God, I want so badly to be healed in such a way that when I share my testimony, people don't even believe it because I'm not walking around with a victim mentality. I'm not walking around as broken, but God, I am more than a conqueror. You say that I fight from victory, not for it. And so I'm going to live with a victory mindset, not a victim mindset. And that goes back to looking back at our past and our shame and being stuck in those places of bondage. God wants to obliterate all of that. God wants to set you free from whatever shame that the enemy has put on you. He wants to break you free from any chains of your past, anything that's been done to you, anything you've done to yourself, whatever that looks like. He wants to set you free so that you can live in the fullness of freedom that he paid for at the cross for you. We don't have to stay stuck in those places. We don't have to stay broken. We don't have to stay in a place of identifying ourselves by our shame, by our regrets, by our sin. And I love hearing testimonies. I love seeing what God has walked people through. And there is such a beauty when you look at someone and you say, there is no way outside of God that you could be living in the freedom that you're living in and in the fullness that you're living in. Like it's such a, an evidence of the, the hand of God in your life, the glory of God on display. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so I just love Jesus. I love his word. And I am getting ready to head out here in a little bit and run some errands, but I just want to pray over you. I want to encourage you to keep going, keep going. Some of you have gotten free in the past from things and it's like the enemy has sent new things to trip you up. Do not give in to that. Do not sit down. Do not seat yourself on the sidelines of the faith. All of us have a part to play. All of us have a part to play in the game. And you have a purpose. You have a call. You have a destiny. You have gifts and anointings and talents inside of you that God wants to use to reach the world. And if anyone has ever told you that you're not good enough, that you don't measure up, if anyone... if anyone has spoken negatively, spoken death over what you thought maybe at one point was a gift that God has given you with. Maybe you stepped out in faith in something and someone came right along and stole that from you because of their word curses or whatever. I want to encourage you to forgive them and step out again. Don't let the enemy keep you in silence because he will do that. He will do that. For me, for so long, I was so insecure about so many things and things that now I know are a direct like gift from God that he's called me to. And I've had that in my life. Any person you talk to that is walking in their giftings, I guarantee if you sit them down and ask them, they could say, yep, I have been so attacked in that area of my life. And if you're sitting here and you're like, I don't even know what I'm called to. I don't know what my gifts are. One, ask the Lord to reveal it. The Bible says, if we ask, we receive. If we lack wisdom to ask and he'll give it. And so ask and start with that and pay attention to the areas that you feel like you've been attacked the most. It's probably attached to your anointing and your calling because the enemy knows if you say yes to God and you start stepping out into those things, that it's going to push back darkness. It's going to advance the kingdom of God. It's going to bring his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. It's going to glorify God and he doesn't want any of that. And so I encourage you to do it anyway, to be bold, to not be intimidated by the enemy, to not be intimidated by the attack. So many times we don't want to step out because we like, we don't want the backlash of the attack of the enemy. But do you know that your God is greater? Your God is stronger. He is no rival. The enemy is no rival to our God. God is so much higher and greater. He is far above all principalities and powers. And you're seated with him in heavenly places as if you're a believer. If you don't know Jesus, I want to encourage you to seek him. The Bible says, seek him while he may be found. To, to call out to him, he will answer. He will respond. Reach out to me if you're like, I don't know about all this Christianity, but I want to. Like, Reach out to me. My social medias are at The Journey with Janice. My website is journeywithjanice.com. Reach out to me. I would love to talk to you. I would love to pray for you, pray with you, explain some things when it comes to Christianity if you need that. Would love that. I don't do this podcast just to talk. Trust me, I could talk all day long, 
my husband now can attest to that. He said to me a couple of weeks ago, he's like, you wake up talking. And I'm like, yeah, I like to talk. So I love to talk, but I don't record this podcast for any other reason other than one, to say yes to the call of God on my life, but two, because God's given me a call to do this and I want to encourage your heart and I want to push you toward him. Ultimately, I'm just a conduit for him. And at the end of the day, don't look to me, look to him, look to Jesus. Don't look to people. People are going to fail you. People are going to mess up. We're not always going to get it right. But there is someone who will always get it right and who always has your best interest in mind, and it's him. And so I encourage you to fall more in love with him, look to him, get in the word of God, spend time in his presence, be involved in a local body of believers, be active in the kingdom. He has so much for your life, so much for your life. And I do not want you to live beneath that. And so I'm going to go ahead and pray and close out this podcast. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this podcast. God, I thank you for every listener who will tune in. God, I thank you that you have so much in store for them. God, I thank you for the way you love them with an everlasting love. God, I thank you that you heal the brokenhearted, that you know every star by name, God, that you are great and mighty in power, that your understanding is infinite. God, we thank you for the truth of your word. And I declare today that we are building our lives on the firm foundation of your word. We love you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness in our lives. God, I pray over every person on here who doesn't know you, that they will encounter you in a new way. God, I thank you that you are making all things new in this season, Lord. I thank you that you're making all of us more like you. At the end of the day, God, that is what we want, to be more like you, Jesus. I praise you and thank you for your faithfulness. I speak life and blessings over every person who listens into this, over every marriage represented, over every family, every child, every community, every church. God, we speak life and blessings over your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. 